All right, and for the recording, this is this is one of the demos for assignment 11. And if it doesn't, it doesn't sound like there's an opinion of whether the group would like to see hard goods or soft goods. So let's do the soft goods one today. So let me share my screen and get things going. So like I mentioned, I will be using sketchbook for this. And if you'd like to follow along, you're, you're welcome to. I'm not sure why the, let's see. It looks like I might have to change a setting really quickly. This was just working a second ago. Let's see. Display toggle is over here. There we go. Okay, now I have my, my pencil back, which is good. Um, and I wonder if I can like move those controls. All right, so you, are you guys seeing my canvas right now? Yes, okay, thanks. Okay, so I'm going to bring an example over here. So um, I was trying to think of things that might be fun to sketch and um, things that would kind of help demonstrate the, the strength of using underlays as a, as a concept. And so I think that the, uh, well, the one that I will be demoing today is uh, this golf bag, um, which is a style of golf bag called a tour bag. And tour bags are kind of the, like the flagship bags that you would see. Uh, I, one, I don't golf, I don't watch golf. So this is kind of a stretch for me, but um, they're, they're, they're golf bags that you would see like pro people using in, in a pro tour. And usually in a pro tour, the caddy or this other person, not the golfer is the one carrying the bag. So they all feature this like giant branding uh, that is on an angle. So when the caddy's carrying the bag, the, the, the brand like stands out, you know, and is oriented correctly. So I would encourage you guys to kind of pick a, a soft good or hard good that you're interested in because it would be a fun thing to draw and go ahead and just use like Google image search. I like to use the, um, the tool setting to find like large images just to make sure I have something high enough resolution. And what I'm looking for is a bag um, that I can use as an underlay. And so I'm, I'm hopefully finding something that doesn't have a background and also is, is at an angle that would be to, fun to draw from. So if I, as I click on a few of these, uh, this one has this like three quarter view and there's like a whole bunch of detail that I get to see on the, the side and the, the back of the bag. Um, you know, I'm kind of shopping around for a rough proportion that I think would be interesting to draw. And, and I'm not worried at this point about how the bag looks because I'm going to be applying a different visual brand language to the bag. Um, for this, maybe it would be easier to find a bag that's a little bit more of a side view. Uh, you know, I, I find that when I'm doing like thumbnail exploration, drawing from a side view, gives me less to think about, um, even though there's still plenty of, of detail here. Oops, I don't know why. Oh, and that's apparently like a shopping link. Let's see. Oh, this one's kind of cool because there's a side view and a front view. And you know what, maybe I'll take this one. I'm gonna copy this image. And even though maybe I won't use the, the front view of this bag, um, knowing that it's there for if I decide to eventually use a front view is kind of a nice thing. So I'm gonna drop this image into sketchbook and I'm gonna blow it up so that it's big enough for me to sketch over and it's on its own layer, right? So the first task, the first thing that I wanna do for my analysis page is redraw the bag just to start to understand the, the basic proportions 
of the thing that I will be drawing. And actually, um, let's see, actually what, what I think I'm gonna do really quick is cut out this side view and put it on its own layer. That way I still have this other view if I need it, but uh, okay. I'm gonna move this so I'm like a little bit more on top of my drawing surface. Okay, so, and I might actually label this layer my underlay just so that I don't mess it up. Um, I'm gonna lock it so I don't accidentally draw on top of it. And I'm gonna start a new layer so I can start sketching on top of this thing. So I'm gonna grab just a pencil, pencil tool. I always like to scribble a little bit first to make sure it's behaving the way that um, I, I expect it to behave. And which one of these is my like undo button here? Okay. I, I like recently set up all of these, these like short key buttons on my Cintiq. And now I'm just gonna trace this. And we've already done this before, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and trace this now and talk about some of the things that I'm seeing. So like, it seems like there's this kind of like, interesting, geometry going on where there's like this big, it's almost like a penguin shape. I, I don't really know how to de define this. It's got kind of like this cylindrical top area with a, like an angle. Uh, it looks like there's sort of an integrated handle here. That's kind of interesting. There's this other shape coming across. There's like clearly a defining slash across the entire bag and it's kind of captured in this like zipper thing, which I think I might try to get a little bit more accurate. It kind of follows the front end of the bag. And I might go ahead and put that in as like kind of a rough double line. Uh, I've got some like structural elements down on the bottom of this bag that kind of layer together. And it looks like there's even some weird looking feet down here. And again, the, the point of this isn't to get it to be perfect. The, the point is just to kind of think about the thing that you're drawing and see if you can find some of its defining features. Um, I see a whole bunch, and actually I'm gonna turn up the opacity just a little bit here. I see a whole bunch of like secondary swoopy design elements going on here that aren't super important, I don't think to the construction of this bag, but I might go ahead and put them in anyway, because it's helping define what's going on. This looks like a pocket with a zipper here. Um, there's another sort of zipper thing going on here. There's a bunch of like double seams on the bottom, um, some more seams going on on the side. Uh, it looks like this is probably a zipper. It looks like that is probably a zipper. We've got some weird like rivet things happening across the top. So again, I like, this is also a helpful exercise in that it'll just kind of loosen you up. Like I came into to class today completely cold. I haven't practiced this yet. And this exercise is just allowing me to get reacquainted with my, my digital tools and and the task at hand. Okay. There's sort of like secondary shape in here and a bunch of extra little details. There's the logo itself, which I'm not going to attempt to trace at this point because it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so I have my like basic line work and there's there's a bag, right? And it looks kind of sketchy. It looks kind of loose. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, for, for my own sake here, 
uh, I'm going to actually duplicate my underlay layer and put it over here. Because the next thing I want to do is some, some basic color blocking and some shading because I'm going to have to shade my concepts eventually. And this is my chance to, to try and wrap my head around uh, the process that I might use to, to render these bags once I redesign them. So I'm going to use this original bag as a reference and start dropping in some color. So um, up until this point, I've just been using my regular pencil tool the entire time. Now I'm going to switch to a dream brush, which is kind of my, my favorite brush for, for adding color. And um, let's see, I believe I can actually color picker. Let's try that again. I can color use a color picker to, to actually grab the color and make sure I'm sort of the right scale here, increase my brush size a little bit. Okay, and just start blocking in some of the color. I'm gonna do the red first because why not? Um, and my process for color, ooh, actually there isn't red on the front of this bag. So let me undo that. It only comes down so far. My process for color is like try to get it close the first time, meaning like the location of the color. But if I if I like overshoot, if I go outside the lines, you know, if I'm a bad kindergartner and I I color outside the lines, I'm not too worried about it because I can always go back through and kind of erase after the fact. Okay, so there's my red color. Um, notice I picked a red that was just a little bit more muted, a little less saturated than the the original color, so I can. I can increase the saturation as a part of like shading. Um, okay, so I also need sort of a dark gray color. I'm gonna start a new layer here and just start to add. The black colors in. Uh, the thing that I really like about this dream brush is the fact that um, it can go from very, very narrow to very, very wide with very little changes in like actual pen pressure, which is great for, for blocking in color. And again, right now I'm just going for like straight up flat color. I'm not worried about shading at this point. Um, I am going to use a hard edge eraser tool to kind of um, clean up some of the edges of this color where I, I shot, sort of overshot a little bit. Um, and then I'll switch back to my dream brush and add some color back on some of these seams. And again, this, uh, this isn't a rendering. My, my goal here is not to make a photorealistic, a completely accurate reproduction of this bag. The point is to represent enough of the bag so that I'm starting to put into my brain the things that help define this bag. Like I notice, I have to color in black areas along the edges of this bag because it makes use of seams and piping and zippers. Like these are things, details that I'll want to include in new bags that I design. Um, you know, as I put this black material color on the handle, I notice this is, this is an area that I will have to define in the next bags that I choose, right? There is a handle on the back, like the neck of this bag, right? That's, a, that's an, an important feature. Um, I'm noticing that there's a sort of a pass through on this other sort of like grip area near the top of the bag that I kind of missed the first time through. So, um, but because I'm, you know, forcing myself to color a little bit here, I'm, I'm identifying that. It looks like there's a sort of like a soft poofy area near the top of this bag that I'm gonna color in and 
probably the next bag that I design will need a similar soft poofy area near the top. And um, let's see, got some little rivet things. I remember from last time. Oh, it looks like there's a sort of like a plastic landing area that's also black near where like the handle, this handle attaches to the top of the bag. That's an interesting design element, or it could be an interesting design element. Um, okay, so that's like, let's see, I, I think I probably need one more color here. This white color is important um, because it, there's this, it, you know, I wonder if this is even like a reflective tape. I, it's hard to tell, but it looks like, you know, that's that white line is a really key contrast point in this bag. And it's sort of like emphasizing the placement of the logo. You know, it, it sort of shows the orientation the bag will fall when someone is, is carrying this as opposed to when it's sitting. Um, I am leaving the logo off again for now. Uh, it looks like there's also a similar white accent line near the top of the bag. Oh my goodness. And at this point, my, my dream brush might be a little too heavy. So I'm gonna reduce its size and try to get this in one shot here. There we go. All right. I think I've hit most of the main elements here uh, in terms of color blocking. And that was relatively, I, I guess I, I don't have like a timer going. I probably could have one going, but but, uh, the point here is like quickly color block your your bag or your your object and try to make note of some of the the, the key defining elements um, and details that you'll want to redesign when you redraw this thing. Uh, okay, the the next step and probably the last thing you'll you'll want to do when you're you know redrawing the existing bag is do some, pardon me, uh, do some basic shading. And this is shading that you will probably do. Um, you're, you're trying to find out the, the process, like how, how much communication can you get with the least amount of shading so that you can use the same process in the next three bags that you design here. Um, and one thing that I notice at this point, and I'm gonna like call some stuff out in a different color just so that we can kind of see it. Maybe I'll use like a yellow color. Uh, I'm starting to notice some things. So the, this top portion of the bag, actually, let me do it in another layer. Let me undo. And I'll call this layer my like notes, notes layer, just so that we have it. So I'm starting to notice a couple of things. This section of the bag seems like it's kind of a cylindrical thing, right? Uh, same with the bottom. The bottom of the bag seems to be a cylindrical surface. So whatever lighting I choose, it should probably allow me to emphasize the roundness of the top and the bottom of the bag. Just mental note. Another thing, uh, this section of the bag, this like, it's almost like a triangle, right? This, this section of the bag seems pretty flat to me, right? In this portion of the bag, there's not much change in the, like the surface isn't round, it's mostly flat. However, there are a couple elements that help add some like depth to this surface, right? There seems to be kind of a ridge along the edge. Um, and so probably it would be helpful for me to imagine um, a lighting scheme that's going to allow me to, to differentiate some of those things, right? I'm getting a little highlight on these ridged areas on the top of the bag. So, um, and also I think like this area of the bag is, is around as it wraps around the back of the bag. So I'm, again, I'm just sort of thinking out loud here about, you know, what my lighting needs to be able to communicate. Some roundness near the top and bottom, um, some way of differentiating any sort of like surface details in this main branded area of the bag, and then probably also communicate the roundness of this, this um, like, I, I'm not even sure what that part of the bag is, but kind of like the lower pocket area of the bag. Um, so to me, I think probably what's going to work really well, and 
probably no surprise here, a, a lighting scheme that works pretty well for most of the things that you guys will be drawing is something that uh, gives me a, you know what? Maybe I'll do a dual lighting thing. Okay. So I'm kind of thinking my light source, I'm going to have two light sources roughly. I'm going to have one on either side of the bag and both of them will be slightly higher than the bag itself. So we kind of have like a top down lighting, but we'll probably get a highlight on this edge. You know what, actually it'd be really helpful. Let's do this in two different colors. All right, so if I have one lighting up high over here on a cylindrical service, I'm probably gonna get a nice highlight along this part of the bag, right? And probably also on this part of the, the cylinder. So we're sort of like the top of this rounded surface and the side of this rounded surface here. And then with the second lighting source, I'm gonna kind of catch this portion of the cylindrical portion of our bag over here a little bit too. And I might get just like a little bit of this front edge. Are you guys following me so far, at least a little bit? That's kind of what I'm seeing here. An another thing that I think I will probably get is the top edge of any like cool um, surface details on this flat part of the bag, the top edge of them will be uh, kind of a mix between light lit from both of my, my sources here. So like I probably get a blue highlight down here, probably get you know, a little bit of a highlight on this edge. Okay, so I'm just kind of double checking in my head that I'm going to be able to kind of shade this thing in a way that's appropriate. So let's turn these off and um, I will talk about a technique for shading that I think is pretty efficient. So after you've done your color blocking um, and I've done my colors in three different layers, I have like a red layer, a black layer and uh, this like kind of gray or not gray, like a white layer. Um, those things, those three things together, I can like add to a folder. And I'm gonna just call this my like color block, color blocking layer. Oops, okay. So I can leave those. I feel like I'm, I'm moving a layer around and it keeps moving, disappearing on me. Hold on a second. Okay, so I have my colors. I'm just gonna put them in a folder and leave them alone. That way I can change them later, later if I need to. I'm gonna make a brand new layer and I'm gonna change the type of this layer to, um, where are we? We're gonna do overlay. Okay, so I made a new layer, I called it overlay. And now I can use the, the, the last type of brush that I, I typically use for this kind of rendering or sketching is an airbrush. And this is just like the regular old airbrush that you can find in like any drawing program. And if I use a white color with an airbrush on an overlay layer, it will let me add highlights to anything underneath that layer. See how it lightens all of the different colors that I have in my color layer, it just brightened them up, which is pretty cool because I don't need to like go into each color and like pick a lighter version of red or a lighter version of yellow to add those highlights. The other cool thing is in an overlay layer, if I use a dark brush, the opposite will happen. It will darken everything else underneath it. Right, all of my color blocking in this folder is being affected by my overlay layer. So I'm gonna add sort of a core shadow into the middle of my, my object. And I might even darken sort of like just the edge here. So I kind of have a more 
concise highlight. And I'm gonna go through and just add a little bit of shading to some of the key areas of my bag to make, let's see, um, we'll go back to a light one to emphasize what's happening. So like on the, the front edge of this area and maybe the top edge of it down here, um, I'm adding a little bit of highlight if I decrease the size of my brush, I can have a little highlight on top of each of these ridges. Um, another thing that you'll notice in soft goods, there are a lot of seams. Um, a good way to indicate a seam is to put a highlight right next to a shadow. It kind of shows, oops, it kind of shows where like um, the thread would sit in a seam. So like I'll come through and add some shadow to each of these seams. And I'm doing this really quickly. I'm not worried about it being exactly, like I've said several times now, like being exactly photorealistic. And by doing this, I'm starting to also get a feel for how I would render similar details in the next concept that I'm, that I'm, you know, that I might eventually sketch. Let's see. And another thing that I think a lot of you will probably notice pretty quickly is that in um, soft goods, a huge part of what makes them look like they're made out of fabric are things like seams and thread. So, uh, you know, one, one area to call your attention to, so like this white stripe area has thread, um, you know, this little seam along the edge. Um, I could go in and like sketch in all of the threads. And if you were doing a really high fidelity rendering, you could like, actually design a brush that adds threads to your design for you. We don't need to go that far. However, if I wanted to indicate that um, that area is supposed to have some sort of threads in it, I can go through with a, oops, a little bit darker. I can use my brush tool to add just a little hint of the kind of like the trough that the threads fall into, right? It, it kind of pulls that area of fabric down away from the light. And it, it will make it feel just a little bit more like it's fabric, a little bit less like it's plastic. Okay. And the other cool thing about overlay is like, you can check just by turning it on and off, whether your shading is adding a little bit of dimension or, or not. Um, another really cool thing about using an overlay layer as your shading is let's say I didn't want this thing to be red. Um, and I think in sketchbook, where, where is it? Uh, let's see. If I pick a layer, I can go to image, adjust the hue of the layer and I can like, Oh, come on, show me a preview. I feel like it's not actually showing me a preview. Okay, I don't know why the preview isn't working, but I just, I changed the hue and now this is a, a purple bag with all of the same shading applied to it, right? So if I like undo and redo, you can kind of see what's happening here. Anyway, just, just a, an, an advantage of, of shading this way. Um, I also noticed really quick that I uh, missed a seam here. This is supposed to be kind of like that dark gray color, that black color as well. Um, so I can change the color and any shading that I've done kind of stays applied to that as well. Okay, so you're going to do an analysis page. 
for the, the soft grid that you choose. And the first part of doing your, doing your analysis page is literally just draw the thing. Draw the thing that you want to redesign. Draw it as close as you can to the original, um, keeping the proportions. Don't worry about branding, but start to think about what areas help define this product, right? And, and you know, if you want to talk out loud or kind of think out loud while you do it, that, that always helps me. Um, but even if you don't, just by drawing it, you're going to start to absorb some of the shapes and proportions. All right, so the next part of the this analysis page after you trace, and actually I'm going to just like condense a few of my layers here. Um, and yes, I have this like notes layer that doesn't make any sense. So I'm just going to get rid of it. Uh, I would like you to, to analyze this bag and call out a few things. So, um, and this, I don't mind if you do it by hand in, in, in pencil, as opposed to like typing this stuff up. But I do want you to think about finding like a nice regular way to organize your thoughts. So what I'm gonna do really quick is I'm gonna label some of these layers. Um, this is my line work layer. Um, this was my, my shading layer. I have my color blocking. Um, I'm going to move, I'm going to select all of these layers uh, and kind of like zoom out really quick. And I pick them all. I would like to just move these to the center. I'm just going to move everything over. I'm going to make a brand new layer and call this my, um, my notes again. And I want to call out some things that help define this bag. And I, I, I wouldn't mind your guys' help in calling out some of the things. So um, I think side note, if you hold shift in Sketchbook Pro, which only works if you're not on a, an iPad. There, uh, you know what, so I don't actually know the shortcut on the iPad. Someone can fill us in because I know there's a way to do it. But if you hold shift, in um, the like desktop version of Sketchbook Pro, you will make like a straight line anywhere that you sketch a line. And these are the types of callouts that I think would be that I'm imagining doing. You know, labeling where things happen. So anyway, um, what are some of the defining features of this bag? Things that that I might want to change in the next versions of my bag. What are some of the things? And like, I'm hoping for. Um, like three or four or maybe five like key things that I want to iterate on in the next version of my bag. So like color proportion. Ooh, okay. So you you hit on something. Uh, okay, so there are actually going to be two different types of callouts. On on one side here, there are going to be I'm going to just say like bag features. And then we're going to talk about, um, I might even call these like VBL um, entry points or assets. Uh, so the thing that you just mentioned uh, wasn't, was a VBL asset, right? This thing has a set of um, like color proportion. And while that's true, that's something I'm going to change, you're right, based on the new VBL that I'm applying. So good, that's one thing that I can mess around with. Um, I'm right now, I guess, more specifically looking for bag features. What are things about this type of bag that either, uh, you know, will be a part of any concept that I, I draw again, but probably want to iterate on as I do that. So uh, why don't I start with one? I, I will start with one and then you guys can, Add your own. So, like, one key thing that I see here is there is a uh, like a strong visual break, um, and this is at a. I, I don't know what I'm just going to call it like a sixty degree angle, like that is a very very prominent feature of this style bag. And coupled with that is um, like prominent
brand placement, like big, right? That's something looking and uh, do I still have my Google page up? Yeah, looking at all of these bags, they all have this like big, like giant brand application that's at an angle on, on pretty much every single bag that is this style bag. So that's something that I want to do in, in all of the versions of my next bag. So what's, what's something else that I might, might be able to like make sure it's a part of each concept, but something that I can iterate around in each version. So like if there's a prominent brand at an angle, fine, but I can change the way that the brand appears, change the way that it is featured on, you know, on the bag, change the way that I'm creating this break. What, what, is, what is something else in this bag that would be a, a key bag feature for us to, to iterate around? Maybe the, uh, the handles that are like on the curved end part. This, like this thing right here? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. And, and I don't usually like to pull a line all the way through the object, but I think that's okay for now. So yeah, um, handles. For sure. And, and maybe you were also thinking about this handle too, right? There are two, two areas where someone needs to grab this bag. And those are things that, you know, I really don't like how I did that. I'm gonna do this. Yeah, there are two grip points and I got to make sure that there's a spot for someone to, to put their handle, put their handle, to grab the handle with their hand. Um, what else do you guys see? Okay, well, I, I see another one. Um, this area, and actually maybe what I'll do is, oh, I hate that the zoom controls are actually on top of my sketchbook controls. That's fine. So maybe I'll do something like this. Pockets, there are pockets back here, right? I don't know what they're for, but there's clearly like one, two and like three pockets on the back half of this bag. I want to keep that. There are a lot of ways that I can add pockets to something, um, but I want to do that. Uh, what else? All right, I, I've got one more. This, this base of the bag. Um, has, if I looked at the original one, like this area down at the bottom, it's, it's like a hard material and it's, and it's, uh, it's kind of grippy so that this bag can stand up. Right. We're just trying to figure out what are, what are the key elements of this thing that I need to keep, but you know, as I change aesthetics, as I change the color proportions, the materials, those kinds of things based on the BBL, I want to make sure that the base of the bag still has this like grippy, sturdy feel. Okay, that might be good enough for now. And uh, what, what I'm trying to show here as well is even if you're, you know, using a handwritten method, right? You're using callouts by just writing them as opposed to typing them. It kind of is helpful if you can, oops, uh, if you can kind of keep where they appear on the page pretty regular. And it will help make your page just feel a little bit more, I don't know, professional. Oh my goodness. Uh, my computer's yelling at me for pressing the shift key too much. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Um, so the VBL assets, you, you don't necessarily need to have on your page here because you've already analyzed them. And I forget who, who mentioned uh, like the color proportion thing that's happening here. 
Um, that's a good one to keep in mind. But I think in general on this analysis page, um, the most important thing here is calling out some of the key features that you want to keep for your, uh, for your next iterations. Uh, other things that you might wanna note though, under VBL assets are uh, the things that you can apply your VBL to. So like this thing has zippers, uh, it has like soft materials, right? So when you're looking at your VBL, you can think, well, how would my VBL treat a zipper? How would my VBL treat a soft material? Um, this thing has, um, you know, yes, color proportion, but more importantly, um, like just there are different color breaks in general that we're going to have to create with something, you know, whether it's um, different materials or, or literally just changing the color of the material, that's fine. And there might be some other more specific things that you uncover in your, your bag that need to be a part of, you know, something that is addressed by the VBL. So anyway, call out what you can on this analysis page. And this is going to help you think about the things that you want to change in your, your main bag concepts. So um, let's move on to the next portion of this project. Oh, one other thing I wanted to do really quick. So a lot of you have, you know, decided to put your, yeah, we'll do it here. Um, your sketches on top of a like colored background and uh, sketchbook actually does give you a way to change the color of the background in a layer that's called background. So feel free to do that. I, I honestly think that like a light gray color is, is usually a really good one uh, because it will allow you to, to emphasize things that are white by making them a little bit lighter than the background, but it doesn't really distract. It doesn't give you this like really heavy page style. Um, just for what it's worth, that's kind of a personal preference thing that, that has worked out really well in the past on a lot of different things that I've sketched. Okay, so I have my notes um, and you can save a copy of this to, to upload to Miro. Um, the, the next part of the task here is going to be redesigning the bag. So what I'd like to do is take a shot at redesigning the bag. And you'll notice in our assignment that I don't have a page requirement for thumbnails in this assignment. And I think in the past, um, you know, one of the things that we've done pretty consistently is, hey, when applying a, a new visual brand language to an existing set of objects, we do a whole page of thumbnails thinking about the way that we might apply it. Um, that might still be useful to you. And you still might want to do some doodling on a piece of paper to kind of figure out what the shapes are going to be. Um, what I'm going to demo is how that how you might integrate that process into Sketchbook Pro in a completely digital form where we'll do a couple thumbnails and quickly make decisions to get to this, this higher fidelity um, like concept in a slightly different way. It's just a slightly different workflow. Okay, so I'm going to turn some stuff off and I need a couple, a couple things. So one thing I'm gonna need is my underlay again right? And uh, I might turn my background into white for now so that my underlay isn't like on a different, I guess I didn't like that white outline around the underlay. I am going to turn it down again and, and I will get my pencil out one more time. Um, you know what? I might even just like add all of that like analysis stuff to its own folder, just to like keep it out of the way. I'm just gonna move all of this into my analysis sketch folder. So um, I don't have to worry about erasing any of that stuff. Okay, and you know what? I'm gonna save too. Quick note <laughs> um, on like file type and saving. 
So a couple things under like page setup. No, not page setup. Where is, uh, here we go. Like image size and canvas size. Um, I like to sketch on a canvas size that matches 11 by 17 paper. That way, if I need to print something out on 11 by 17 paper, it doesn't look pixelated. Uh, I've also found that the resolution that is the most efficient to sketch at uh, is 150 pixels per inch. Now, for those of you who care about the technical stuff, 300 PPI or DPI while it's on the screen is really common because that's kind of the resolution that printers print at. Um, so the question sometimes is, why are you sketching at half that resolution? The answer for that is um, twofold. One, it reduces my file size a little bit. And two, um, the, the scale of the pens and other tools in Sketchbook scale with canvas resolution. And it, I think they feel more natural at this slightly lower resolution. Plus, when I print at 150 DPI at 11 by 17, there's not a hugely noticeable difference for Sketchbook Pro stuff. So if you didn't get any of that or you don't care about it, it's totally fine. I'm just, what I'm trying to communicate is um, document size of 11 by 17 at a resolution of 150 has been kind of like my, my standard and it's worked pretty well for a Sketchbook Pro. Um, other thing, save as often as you think of it. Um, the file type I like to save with in Sketchbook Pro is actually PSD, which is the Photoshop file format, as opposed to its default, which I think it prefers TIFF. Um, the reason for that is twofold. One, PSD files are way smaller than TIFFs. They take up less space on your computer. And two, um, I it's pretty common actually for me to bring a Sketchbook sketch file into Photoshop at a later port um, you know, a later phase in the design project. And uh, so the, they're, they're still compatible. I guess Photoshop can also open TIFFs, but anyway. Um, so I'm going to save it as a PSD. And I guess for now, I'm just going to put it on the desktop. This is my assignment 11 soft goods demo. OK, more sketching, please. OK, we'll, we'll get there. Um, okay, so the next part of your assignment is apply a VBL to the thing that you've chosen. And uh, the VBL that I would like to use, um, let me bring one of these over to this screen. Uh, the VBL I, I'd like to use well, I guess, you know, originally I was thinking I would I would use Zoku because that is a brand that I've applied to a lot of things in my career. And very conveniently, some of you all uh, decided to analyze Zoku. So I have an example that kind of hits something that you've done and something that I've done as well. And I think the version of Zoku that I'd like to use uh, is this more like old school version. Um, like this. There's no transparency. Um, so another thing I'm going to do really quick is bring up a few of those products. And yeah, like this right here. So I'm going to copy this over to my sketchbook page uh, as I'm thinking of ideas. And for you all, it would probably be helpful for you to, to either have your visual brand language analysis page up where you can see it, uh, or copy some of those specific images over to your board so that you can see them kind of in the same, the same page that you're looking at here. Um, anyway, that's, that's just a helpful thing for me. I'm just going to call this like my reference area. And now I just get to start thinking about 
how I'm going to redesign this bag so that it looks like a Zoku bag instead of a tailor-made bag. Um, and because I've already done an analysis on this brand, I, I'm, I can kind of work within those visual brand language constraints. So some of the things that were called out here, um, like, oops, let me move this layer on top. Uh, like even straight edges are slightly curved. Um, there's this tendency to have sort of like a scallop on, on places that open. Um, there is a way that they have this like color break. Uh, there is kind of a pretty well-defined proportion of color, um, something that's like 80% one color, 10% a complementary color, and then 10% white. Um, you know, the logo looks like this. Um, sometimes the logo is also embossed as opposed to printed. Uh, there is a way that Zoku does feet. They tend to be white with a like a little black inset uh, and other things, right? So I'm just going to start thinking about ways to, to make these two things come together. Um, I like, for example, how this shape gives me something to follow for the bottom of my bag. So maybe I'll just start with that. Um, there are feet on the bottom of the Zoku, and I'm just going to literally mimic what those feet do on my bag. And at this point, there's not, not necessarily a right or wrong way to do it. And I think I'm probably going to do this roughly um, first and come back and do it a, a second time with more refined line work. Um, the top of this bag, I, they have this like straight line. It just goes straight across and they have this scallop. Um, that's something that they use pretty consistently. So I might do some sort of scallop like that. Um, and I have to think about what, what I do with the handle. Uh, the brake going across the side here. You know, they they do have a color break, but because the color break is usually at the top, maybe what I'll do in the middle here um, draws on, you know, if you looked at this product from the top, it's kind of this shape. And then it has like a slot in the middle and kind of a circle like this. Just trust me it, that that is a thing that exists. And I think I might do something similar with the brand. I might keep that sort of strong, you know, angled element where the brand will go and their brand is just a series of four squares. But I'm gonna do a shape probably more like this. Um, let's see, actually, you know what? Now that I'm looking at it, I might grow that shape a little bit so it kind of covers a little bit more of the bag area there. All right, I'm still using my pencil tool. Um, let's see, I kind of like the curve that's going on here. Mm, that transition is a tricky one. I'm not sure how I want to do that. Do I want this to kind of angle out? Maybe. And then down here, this is kind of an interesting thing too. Maybe I'll kind of stick with that original shape down in the bottom. Um, this one, you know what? Maybe I kind of like how this might be like a smooth transition rather than having a kind of like a point here because this kind of has more smooth transitions on its corners. Hmm. Let's see. I like the color break here. You know what, maybe the handle comes down underneath the color break in this case, something like that. And then, oh, I still need a handle on the side here, but maybe I'll change the shape of this handle to be something a little bit more, a little bit more like these other sort of like slot shapes. Maybe it will do something more like this. Sure. Let's see. So I know that there are a couple pockets. You know, one thing I notice on 
on these on these shapes is there aren't a whole lot of like surface undulations like ins and outs there it's a pretty uniform surface across all of these different details so maybe what i'll do is um think about these pockets more like they're just a you know like a zipper thing and we kind of break them more regularly rather than like a bunch of big layers that are that are differences and same thing here maybe maybe i'll add another kind of like pocket area back here that kind of helps transition from this cylindrical shape to this kind of big shape here you know what? i don't know if i like that but maybe i'll keep it for now that's that's fine okay this thing maybe i'll try to like widen it out a little bit more you know maybe i don't mind if this is more of a cylinder and nah, i darken that we'll keep it like this Okay, so anyway, I'm roughly sketching out some shapes that are based on my VBL in a form that I'm, again, I'm kind of just referencing the, the overall proportion of the bag that I already sketched, right? And I'm thinking about some of the things um, that I learned during my original sketch, like the fact that I will need some pockets and that I will need some seams and that I will probably need some zippers uh, on some of these different areas. Okay, so that might be one direction here. Um, so there are a couple ways that I can keep, keep moving. Uh, one would be to take this set of line work and because it's, it's, uh, it should have been on its own layer. Unfortunately, I, I put my analysis on the same layer. I can take this and shrink it and put it over here and then just start my next one, right? So that's one way to do a Zoku one. What's another way that I might do a Zoku bag? Um, so, you know what, why don't we do another one? Why don't we just see what another one might be? Um, okay, so let's try one. You know, I, I like the idea of focusing on the brand. And in this case, I'm gonna try a different kind of like brand application. Maybe this time I will use that like scallop shape as like a defining split through my, through my bag. I'm gonna take this, this shape right here, right? Where there's a scallop and a straight line. I'm gonna apply that right in the middle of my bag. And just, let's just go with that. Let's see how this design happens. Uh, I'll take sort of like more of the rounded shape in this other areas, because the Zoku does kind of have this like bubbly feeling to it. You know what, and maybe what I'll do is I'll kind of follow the original shape here and just turn it into more of this like this kind of thing that we have going on right this shape is like this big bubbly shape and i'm going to kind of go with that you know i kind of like the idea that like you know the part of the bottom here leaves an opening like maybe that can actually be some sort of pocket with like stuff sticking out of it. I don't know what you'd stick in there, but that could be kind of cool. Um, the top of this thing, let's see, maybe I stick with more of a slot shaped handle near the top. Um, maybe in this case, I stick with kind of the handle geometry that's already there. Um, and, you know, if Zoku is going to be on here, it is kind of breaking with how they treat their logo because their logo isn't usually in that kind of um, like scalloped shape. You know what, well, what if I, what if I moved it actually? What if 
the logo is like here, it's still kind of big. Yeah, actually that could be kind of cool. And maybe in this case, the feet I can kind of see like this. Maybe there's like a slight material break near the bottom here, but like overall the form kind of flows together. And again, I'm like thinking out loud for, for a lot of this because I, you know, the question that usually goes through my head is, you know, maybe this, maybe this would be cool. Maybe this would be cool. Maybe it would look interesting if I did something this way. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really struggling right now with like what, what I could do with these, these pockets. Uh, you know, I do have this like scallop thing going on. Like, what if I just mimicked that same scallop on its way up here, like this? And I made like a series of like sort of stair steps. I don't know if that is kind of interesting. Maybe I don't know how I how I terminated these shapes here. Kind of reminds me of how they would you know, like inflate to become the, the rest of this top shape. It's kind of interesting. Uh, if I didn't like it, I could just undo it. But you know, we'll, we'll go with that. And maybe I'll do like a little pocket on the top here. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Okay, there's there's enough of a of a concept for me to to maybe just move on to the next one. So same thing, I might um, grab this line work, shrink it down, throw it off to the side here and, and keep going, right? Eventually you guys are, are shooting for three. You're shooting for three concepts. Maybe the first three things that you try are gonna look awesome, maybe not. Um, maybe you need to do four or five or six or seven or 10 before you start to find something that's really interesting. Um, I'm starting to feel a little bit more loose now. Like I got some of the, you know, like rigid line work out of out of the way in this first concept. The second one is still kind of weird and bubbly, but um, I'm I'm ready to try a third one. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to save again. Always a good idea to save, and start thinking about another another way that I could do this concept here. Um, you know what? So there's something, there's something kind of interesting about like, I haven't really done anything that looks like the handle, right? This, this ice pot maker has a handle and it kind of reminds me of what's happening here. And I kind of think it would be interesting if, let me try something else. Like what if this sort of like wrapped around the back, this was kind of the scallop and did something like this. And then the rest of this happens kind of like it did in the last one. I don't know if that's that's interesting or not. I mean, I'm kind of imagining like maybe pockets could kind of sit on top of this, kind of 3D like. Maybe even we get a couple pockets on the side. That kind of like do something like that. No, that's awful. I don't like that. I'm gonna undo it. I do think the brand, having the brand like right here in the middle kind of makes sense. The handle in this case could come out something like that. You know, I, this one doesn't seem to be doing anything for me yet, so I'm going to just move on. I will shrink this one down, move it over here. There's, there's something going, I, I don't know. I feel like I'm onto something here. You know, maybe, maybe we'll stick with this like top being white, just like this.
Okay, you know, this will be an even more direct translation. So we'll have that like scallop thing come down like that. You know, what? I almost wonder like if this went all the way down. We do have this like, we have a need for this other part to kind of cut across here. You know, maybe I can do something that's a little bit more like this. Yeah, that's interesting. And then, you know what, maybe this is almost like inflated a little bit here. I feel like we might be getting somewhere. Maybe in this case, the handle kind of like cuts into the bag a little bit, like this. And maybe there is a like a top handle that does something here. So you can kind of cut across. All right, let me shrink this one down. That, I don't know, I feel like that's kind of an interesting other direction here, better than this one. Okay, so anyway, I hope I've kind of conveyed the, the process here, like try to sketch over your bag again and again, thinking about different ways that you can apply your VBL. And I do think that um, like most of you have several products that you can draw your inspiration from. Right, you've, you've sketched several different shears or several different shoes or boots or cars, right? So if you're looking for an answer about like how to transition from one area of your new object to another area, see if you can find and copy something from your VBL. Um, at this point, what I'd like to do is go through the process of um, like coloring, right? Getting, getting your concepts back up to the level where they need to be for the rest of this project. So, uh, all right, I will hide my underlay and I'm going to go ahead and hide my reference and apparently I have a whole bunch of like bits of my sketch over here that weren't that helpful to, or I guess aren't needed in this next step. So I'm just going to erase those really quickly. Um, where is the rest of that? There we go. Let's just get rid of these guys. Um, so the next step, I think, would be to, to take all of your line work and I'm just going to like merge everything together and start lining things up the way that you want to sketch them. So let's say I do that first one. Uh, this one right here. Actually, I'm going to get rid of this guy. We'll do this one. Just make sure they're roughly the same scale. And this one here in the middle. Again, I'm just making sure that we're like roughly the same scale here. So these are my, my three concepts, the ones that I want to do. Line them up, make sure they're kind of spaced the right way. Um, I might take all of them and make sure that they're kind of like, here, let me zoom out a little bit on the page. Make sure I have enough room on my page so that they can kind of breathe a little bit. You know, leave yourself a little bit of white space around the outside. Uh, now is probably a good time to like 
change your background color ever so slightly so you can start to draw on top of these guys. Um, this is my rough line work. Right, these were just, I literally just blew up my thumbnail sketches at this point. And you know what, I might keep that reference, oops. Keep my reference image up for just a little bit longer so that I can pull a couple of the, um, the colors off of here. And now I'm gonna go through the same, same process uh, that I've done in the past, uh, that you guys have probably done in the past as well. Um, you can start with some color blocking or you can start with refining your lines. Um, I might start with refining my line work a little bit. So I'm gonna turn my rough line work down, get my pencil tool back out and just try to go back through this concept and um, add some line work that is closer to the, like the final line work that I'm going to be using. And actually I totally missed that. This looks more like that. And it's okay if you leave some of the, um, some of the like sketchy quality to your line work a little bit. But what we don't wanna see are like in my rough sketches, I had a whole bunch of like really hairy, really hairy lines, you know, where I sketched over the same thing a whole bunch of times. Oh man, this shape is giving me a little bit of trouble to make sure it's kind of the right. Let's try. There we go. Got my little line going across. You know what? I'm going to sketch a little bit larger here. I think that's easier to be accurate. Uh, at this point, once you have your like basic shapes down, it it's totally fine for you to kind of diverge from your design just a little bit if you want to tweak the shape. Oops. Okay. You know what, I might do a trick here where I feel like this, this shape is one I have to get pretty close for it to communicate what I'm trying to go for. There we go, it's a little better. Um, I put that inner shape on its own layer so I can kind of like move it ever so slightly and make sure it's in the middle. Okay. And again, I think with these ones, it's, it's still appropriate for you to be um, like somewhat loose because these are visual variations of a concept, right? Variations on a theme. They're not, they're not finished ideas. But like I said a minute ago, um, having line work that just is a little bit cleaned up, I think at this point is helpful in keeping your communication clear. I think a lot of the construction of this concept I'm working on now, I'm gonna to have to communicate with, with value because um, I'm kind of envisioning that these shapes kind of merge into one another. So um, I, I guess there are some lines that I'm seeing in my, under, my underlay that aren't really there in my refined line work 
because I'm, I'm kind of envisioning them as uh, like form changes, not necessarily material breaks. Okay, um, so there's more refined line work here. And if I turn off the work, the line work that's underneath, it's it's a subtle difference, right? But I think it, it will make it easier for me to kind of block in my color. Um, and I might even leave this rough line work on here really light because it does help kind of inform maybe how I envision some of these shapes transitioning. Uh, so anyway, the, the next step, again, some color blocking. Um, I might start with white, again, with my, my dream brush here. And one important thing at this, at this step that's worth noting is um, coloring and adding, basically adding value to, to three objects together is as actually quite a bit easier than adding value to three objects separately on their like on their own. Uh, and that's because you have a, a way, I guess you have a chance to kind of do all of the steps for all three of them simultaneously. There's an efficiency that will kind of happen. And actually, now that I'm seeing this, I, I think I want like the white to be on the feet for all three of these. But I realized I don't want white on the top of this concept, so I'll have to change that here in a minute. Um, maybe I'll do white on the inside here. Oh, another thing that I guess I was kind of doing in the back of my head and didn't articulate as it was happening, but uh, those, those features that we called out in the previous step, so uh, those, those things we wanted to maintain in all three concepts, namely, you know, the big slanted brand area, it's there in all three concepts, but it's treated differently. Uh, the handle areas, they're there in all three concepts, but it's treated differently in all three concepts. And then the pocket area, um, it's one, one more area that's, that's there, um, but treated differently in my concepts. And actually I'm noticing some a sketch error over here. I think I missed something in my line work that I'm going to go back and change really quick. Uh, looks like that does one of these. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pull. You know, another thing that might be kind of fun here is, um, you know, Zoku as a brand uses multiple pairings of colors across their, their brand. So rather than color all three of these the exact same, I'm going to try and hit the same proportions, but I'm, I'm actually going to do like one of them uh, with this like two-tone magenta purpley combination. And then do the other ones with a slightly different combination. Okay. 
actually don't mind if that whole thing is kind of purple. I'm gonna label some of my layers, some of these colors, so I don't mess them up. Uh, so I have like a white layer. I have a, um, I guess like dark hue, and then I have a light hue layer. So I guess my plan for the, the rest of class today is just to keep going with this demo. Um, I know it's 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 a rather long demo, but I, I wanted to give you guys a, we, we haven't done a demo in a while and I, and I kind of wanted to get back into this space with you all and give you a chance to kind of just watch. And um, I guess I will keep going here. While I'm going, though, are are there questions? Are there things you're thinking about or struggling with, or or have questions about that you'd like to see um, as I'm as I'm kind of like finishing this stuff up? Um, I think someone uh, started to talk, but I you you kind of cut out there. Uh, Amelia, are uh, you? Hello, hello. Oh, there you go. I think I, I oh, hear okay. you. Okay, um, so I'm kind of confused about uh, how like assignment 10 is being implemented into this. So is it an object from assignment 10 or like the style from assignment 10? So yes, yeah, thank you for your question. So what I want you to do for this assignment is choose one brand new object that, that already exists, but something that you haven't sketched before mm -hmm. that you're gonna choose a hard good and you're gonna choose a soft good. And, my demo today is based on around that soft good, right? This golf bag thing. So you're gonna choose something and then you're going to apply your visual brand language from assignment 10 to the new object. Okay, so, cause my object was um, do all and they basically only use two colors uh, with like a little bit of one other color, but so all three of the objects are just gonna be different shapes, but with similar color. Absolutely. But that's basically what you're looking for, right? Yeah, I'm, I, okay, I, just I, at the end of the, I, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, um, what it's not, you'll be doing if Dewalt is your brand is you're gonna like if you were doing a golf bag, you'd be doing Dewalt golf bags. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. So today I was doing Zoku golf bags, and I'm not worried about the fact that Zoku would never do a golf bag. This is just a sketching exercise. Okay, thank you. So yeah, no, that's good. Um, what the other thing I think I, I remember mentioning before we, we got started today was that before you guys take off, um, I want you to have chosen the two objects that you want to redesign and pick which VBL from assignment 10 you will be using to do that. So that, that would be a great thing for you to have questions about if you have questions about it. <laughs> So uh, I guess, is anyone thinking about a thing that they, they would like to sketch? Like who, who has an idea of something that you're, you're thinking about sketching? What's I kind on of started one of my pages and I was using my KitchenAid VBL 
and I'm doing some purses. Purses, kitchen aid purses. That's excellent. That actually, yeah, absolutely. I can I can picture how that would translate. I'm trying to figure out where to apply, like, because it has a lot of those like silver reflective bands on it, which is kind of fun to try and like find a spot on the purse. Yeah, uh, definitely. And and like your kitchen aid. Well, I forget kitchen aid. One of the kitchen aid brands or sub brands is um, pretty centered around that like you know bright horizontal silver band that goes yeah. like right through the thing right yeah i have that and then i was thinking of doing one that's like literally a clear like i kind of started this sketch here that has like you can see through the base of the purse so you can kind of see the band in the background okay like the base of it will be clear like the glass kind of okay no i can see that um you know, another thing that KitchenAid, I, I, if I'm remembering correctly, like most of those those objects, those KitchenAid objects have bases, right? They have bases and, and like the metal does something interesting as it transitions from like the main form to how it sits on something. That would be a really interesting thing for you to think about um, with your purses or, or other kind of bags for sure. Because most of them are meant to like sit at some point, right? You carry them, but they also sit. So I don't know if that means like including some feet or um, <laughs> it would be funny to see like a power cord on one of your purses. I'm not saying you should do that, but. What else are people thinking about? What's an, what's another one? KitchenAid purse. Yeah, I definitely I get that one.
All right, so I have some of my like color blocking done and I don't know why that layer disappeared on me. Bring this back up, maybe. <clears throat> All right, so the next step, um, I'm still missing a couple of like key details here, right? Like I haven't touched my seams, I haven't added zippers or some of those other like important things that I learned about um, when I was first sketching my new item without the VBL. Uh, but I think one thing that's going to help me get a better feeling for like how these objects are at this, this scale before details is doing some of that um, shading. So like I did before, oops, I'm going to create a brand new layer uh, and call it my shading and make it an overlay layer. And at this point, I have like all three of the concepts that I'm thinking about doing uh, kind of rendered at the same level, right? Slightly refined line work. I have my color, basic color blocking finished. And um, we're going to do kind of the same thing here with um, highlights and shadows. So like we talked about the first time, I'm going to do a uh, kind of like dual light source theme where I have like, oops, let me make my airbrush a little bit bigger here. Mostly light from the top, but also kind of a little bit from either side. And I'm going to undo here. So like hit the side of this one, hit the side of this one, the side here. And I'm, I can already tell slightly that the, um, I guess like these purple and magenta colors seem to be taking the, uh, the light a little bit more dramatically, a little more con there's a little more contrast there than the red is. So I might have to go back into the, the red concept and add a little bit of extra. And that's okay, I can do that. Um, why don't we hit a couple, a couple shadows in here as well. And actually maybe even like this entire Kind of near the base is going to be a little bit more in shadow. Um, one thing you'll notice if you have any white in your concepts is that um, an overlay layer will not darken white. Uh, also, I believe in an overlay layer, it's really hard to um, lighten things that are way too dark too. So another layer that can be helpful to make is um, oh come on pen. There we go. Uh, the other two really common layer types that I will use for for shadow and for light are lighten and multiply. Uh, lighten use sort of the same way with like a light a white brush, airbrush, will literally just lighten anything that's underneath it. Uh, and it's a little bit more easy to control. So like on my, my red over here, um, I'm adding a little bit of white to my lighten layer in a way that kind of matches the contrast between this red concept and this purple concept over here. Um, let's see, so I'm going to go through and kind of do that on a couple of these areas that I think are important. And I'm mostly looking for just some of the, the big, like the big overall shading on these concepts, uh, just to make them feel like they're round or they have some sort of volume to them. Uh, on a multiply layer, I can do a little bit of shading on this white that I couldn't do on uh, my like overlay layer. 
So like here, I might do something like this to both of these to kind of make it seem like it's like scalloped, scalloped in a little bit. And I'm going to erase away like the, the areas that I didn't want that shadow to hit. Um, if you notice one thing that, that can be really nice in a, like, especially in a soft good on a seam is if you leave a little bit of um, like highlight right on the edge, it'll make it seem like it's two pieces of fabric that are kind of joining up. And you can always go back and add that kind of highlight too. Okay, so that I guess the next little level of detail that I might add here, like I mentioned when we were sketching the concept, uh, I guess like sketching the original bag is adding some shadow to the areas where my, my seams are, kind of make them feel like they're, um, like the fabric is kind of being pulled in by any thread that would be there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on these areas where I've indicated that there might be seams. And it also might be a good time uh, if you don't already have some of the, like I noticed there were a whole bunch of seams in the original concept. I could probably add some at this point um, just to, to bring the level of detail up to match what was already there. Like on this, on this, area, it might be kind of cool to imagine this as, you know, like kind of a pleated, or maybe not pleated, but just kind of like um, pillowy leather area, something nice and soft that would be pleasant to touch. And let's see if I'm thinking the logo is going to be here. Uh, let's see. That's something I can kind of add. my like very basic shadows too, in the same way. There might also be opportunities at this point to like start thinking about some texture. Um, a lot of the VDLs that you guys were talking about had um, a, a whole bunch of different materials that you might use. And actually, I'm kind of regretting not doing this a little bit sooner in the demo because I feel now it's going to be buried a little bit. But um, let's talk about how you can add some like fabric texture to to a soft good. So. Um, the, the general process for me is go to like Google image search and look for, uh, let's see, like what I'm going to do like a leather texture, leather. So if you look up leather, there's a good chance you're going to get a whole bunch of these like big swatches of leather that you can use as a texture. Um, and again, if you go to tools, change the size to something really large. Um, there's a better chance that you'll get something usable uh, because the texture I'm imagining applying is going to cover a pretty big area. Uh, and also at this point, I'm not worried about the color. I just want something that's like a nice big swatch of leather. Yeah, something like that. This looks kind of pixelated actually, actually. So let's see if there's another. Oops. And that just brought me Man, image search has all these like integrated um, shop things. Let's see, leather texture that are kind of annoying. There we go. Okay, so what leather do I like? You know what? This one might end up working really well. 
I, I do want to find a texture that doesn't have a whole bunch of like gradation across its surface. Um, because if you have to like tile the texture, it might be kind of more difficult to work with. Let's let's try this this one right here. So I'm going to just uh, copy this image and paste it right on top of my stuff here. And obviously it's not the right scale. So um, let's say I wanted to make this I want to make this whole white thing kind of like this leather texture. So I'm going to copy this a couple times and kind of tile it out so it's roughly, um, you know, the size that I need it to be. And if you are worried about the seams between your two different texture layers, you can always like overlay them just a little bit and kind of use a soft eraser between the two. Um, that generally can help blend these two layers together. I'm going to combine them and kind of reposition them. Maybe I'll scale them slightly uh, and just kind of like lay it in place. Um, and then same thing, same thing works here. I would try and like play with the layer type. Uh, multiply on top of a white layer is usually good. Again, like overlay is not a bad thing or even like a soft light or hard light layer will give you kind of the, the look that you're looking for, depending on what color you're, you're putting this, this texture on top of, right? Um, on top of the white, it looks like probably a, um, let's see, probably a multiply is gonna be the best. And if the effect is like too heavy, you can always lighten it up just a little bit. Um, and actually, I'm gonna make a copy of this because I might use it somewhere else. Uh, then you can just literally erase away what you don't need. And you have a texture on top of your, on top of your sketch. Um, if you leave this on top of your like color layers, it will pick up any of the color uh, that's underneath them. And if you leave it on top of or under your like shading, uh, it shouldn't really matter, especially if you're using like a multiply. Um, I generally put them underneath the shading, but on top of the, the color just for, for what it's worth. Um, yeah, and that's that's pretty much as simple as it is to, to, to add some sort of texture to your, your concepts. Um, and it can make a pretty big difference in terms of, especially with um, like soft goods, communicating your intent for materiality. Um, yeah, like if I wanted the, the bottom of this thing to have that same sort of leather texture, again, it's pretty much as easy as just finding a pretty decent texture on Google image search, um, dropping it in, scaling, tiling if you need to, to get it to kind of match the, the scale of the material that you're imagining, and then erasing away any, any parts that you don't want, actually want to, to be that material. Um, in this case, uh, I think color burn is also a really good option for, for making a texture not desaturate what's underneath it. Um, it can, it can uh, you know, in, in this case, it kind of makes the green a little bit more green as opposed to just like darker. Right, so there's an example of that texture in place. Um, it's also really helpful sometimes to, to match like the materials of your VBL as closely as possible. So um, some of the, in, in the golf world, um, I'm sorry, I said of your VBL, but of your target product. So in the golf world, um, I know leather is a really common material, but there are also lots of different types of leather. Uh, so like I, I found one leather texture, but if I pair it with another leather texture, something that's a little bit more fine or a little bit more like natural looking or this almost like uh, suede version of leather. Yeah, let's try this one. It will continue to add that that depth to your your product. 
All right, so here's a good example of like a soft suede material that's the wrong color. Um, you, can, you can still use this. There's really just like one extra step you need to take. Uh, on Once you have that image pasted in place, uh, if you go up to image, adjust hue and saturation, and you just reduce the saturation down completely, uh, it will make that image black and white. And that way, when you, you know, change the layer type to something like a color burn or a multiply or an overlay, um, it will it will keep the color underneath that you, you originally wanted as opposed to like making it brown, which is probably not what you were intending. That's not what I was intending anyway. So like maybe this, this yellow area on this concept is more of the suede material. Um, it might be helpful at some point in, as you're like finding materials that you think work well, materials and textures that you think work well, work well to like start a folder somewhere on your computer um, to, to save the high quality textures, uh, you can actually spend a lot of time looking for textures that work really well. And um, I know I just like picked two really quick ones off of Google image search and they, they tended to work okay. Um, but if you start building a library now that you'll, you'll just have more to choose from later. So I actually really like that suede material and how it looks next to that more rough leather, leather material um, and it gives us another talking point. So just another option for you as you move through this exercise. You know, and maybe I'll do something similar over here. Um, I do, I, I haven't been calling it out every single time that I do it, but I, I often make use of like duplicating layers in, um, in sketchbook to reuse textures and colors and line work uh, multiple times. So like to add this suede texture to my second concept, I just duplicated the, um, the texture layer from my first concept over. And there it is. And I, I mean, really, it, it kind of makes especially this, this inner portion, just feel that much more believable. So again, you could do that on, on all of your concepts. And the, the, I think probably the last level of detail I would want to see on these are maybe two things. One, we wanna see the logo placement. And as many of you called out in your VBL, there's, there's often like a set of rules that you've uncovered um, on how to put the logo onto the, the object within to keep it within the VBL guidelines. Um, so definitely follow that. I think in this case, um, the logo here is kind of applied as a, it's almost just painted, right? It's a white logo that's been painted on top of um, the surface. I might be able to even just like steal that. Let me see if I, I can. So if I take my selection tool and like copy the, oops, I think I have to be on the layer here. Yeah, if I copy that and then I paste it. Okay, so now I have this Zoku, right? I can make it larger, rotate it, put it in place. It's not a very high resolution image, but um, it's actually pretty close to what I need it to be. You know, and I didn't have to like redraw the logo. I just stole it off of one of their existing products. There. Yeah, and I think probably what I'd, I'd want to do is find a slightly higher resolution of this logo. I actually don't mind that it's a little bit curved. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. All right, so there's one. Um, all 
logo is an important one. Other, other important things. So once you zoom in on each of these concepts, there are still some missing things like the zippers, like I mentioned. So it might make sense for you to go back in. Um, you know, once you've done the coloring and materials and logo placed on all of your concepts to go back through and add a little bit more detail about where zippers might be and just sort of hint at where those zippers would appear. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything, you know, super fancy, but again, a little bit of detail will go a long way to making this thing feel a little bit more believable. Um, you might also add, um, like I started to do over here, some of the extra patterns or, or other, other little details that will, that will make this feel a little bit more finished. Um, some, sometimes, you know, our first shading pass uh, was sort of the broad strokes, big volumetric stuff. When I look in a little bit more closely here, I see that there are some areas that I would probably want to change, like, you know, this area should probably be in shadow because it's the inside of the handle. And maybe what I got to do is, oops, that was extra, extra dark. Make this a little bit bigger. You know, change that up a little bit. Um, I might add some lighter edges to like the tops of some of where my material comes together. Again, to just kind of emphasize the fact that this is two pieces of fabric that are coming together. And if I make a change on one of my concepts, like adding a little bit of highlight to the top edge of you know, this material, I can go through to all of my concepts and make sure I'm doing the same treatment to all of them. That way it keeps it really consistent. And then I, you know, another thing that I've, I've talked to on more of a case by case basis with, with people is like, how do I know when I'm done? You know, how, how far you, you could obviously spend or obviously or not, you, you could easily spend 10 hours rendering these things. And the, the goal of this exercise isn't uh, once again, to get to some sort of like photorealistic set of concepts. Uh, the point of this exercise is to present three viable directions for a Zoku bag, a Zoku golf bag, that gives us just enough detail so that we can have a conversation about, yep, that looks like a Zoku bag, or hey, you know what, those proportions are totally off and we need to change something. Um, you guys all have busy schedules and I think you'll know when you're done based on how much time you have left to, to actually do this. Right. So I, I would say if you spent two hours on one of these pages, that that's probably all the more that you should spend on that page. If you have more time to spend because you're into it and, you know, you went through lots of different ideas and you and it's exciting for you and you want to practice. Fine. You can spend a little bit more time. But if you're in a situation where it's, you know, you have lots of other work, lots of other projects to get to, and you just need a cutoff point. I think any more than two hours on one of these like sets of three concepts, and you can you can wrap it up. You know, just try to try to get it to a point where all three of your concepts are rendered to a similar level. All the more reason to try and do things um, like I've done today, where it's like you do the line work for all three things first, you do the color blocking for all three things next. You do basic shading for all three things next. You do your branding for all three things next. And that way, when you do get to a point where you're like, yep, I'm out of time, all of your concepts are rendered at a similar level. All right, so I, I feel like I've talked through a whole bunch of things today during the demo. And um, the I, I think the task 
I hope the task is clear. You know, you guys are going to take one of your VBLs from assignment 10 and you're going to apply it to a brand new product. Um, actually, two brand new products, one soft good and one hard good. Our demo today kind of covered some of the things that you'll encounter when you're designing soft goods and um, also covered how you might want to use a, um, you know, an underlay to help answer some of the questions about proportion or perspective, right? I was tracing for all of these concepts all of the time because it makes it more efficient for me to think about um, to think about the design decisions and not how to render this thing. Uh, so I guess one final touch here while I have everyone, <laughs> or while I still have a few people with us is um, like background elements. So uh, background, like if I wanted to do a vignette again, um, try and keep things nice and regular. I would probably let your objects seem like they're breaking the vignette on the top and bottom. Um, so it, it feels like they're kind of anchored. And then uh, if you wanted to add some sort of color, you're, you're welcome to do that or, or even just like simple value. It doesn't take much. Like if I wanted to do this the most simple way possible, um, I would probably just go with a slightly darker gray. Oops, and somehow I did that on top of my line work layer. It's like a flat gray. I'll fill in this whole thing. And it's enough to kind of emphasize that these are a set. Ooh, and I also noticed that my white kind of bled over here, so I'm gonna erase that. Cool, and actually maybe I'll even lighten it a little bit further. That's, that's pretty much all you need. Uh, the things that are missing from this would be obviously I didn't end up applying the brand to all three of these, right? I've, I've touched on a few things that I would want to spend a little more time doing. And it's always appropriate to have a title and some notes. So if you wanted to call out some key features and say um, like, hey, this is a zipper pocket. Um, this one is more of like a snap pocket. This one has a, a leather handle. This one has a handle that's integrated into the main form, whatever, like call our attention to some of those key decisions and, and you can call them out in writing and it, it, will, it will help. It'll help you think. It'll also help us understand what your decisions were. So that's where I will leave things for today. I know it was a long class, mostly a demo. Like I said before, um, and thanks for the reminder, this is, this is recorded. So I'm, I'll stop the recording now.